Hello everyone, Allie here and welcome to the gold mine. Thank you for joining me here on another episode of Allie's Treasure Trove. Today I do have a bit of an overdue video for you guys. I have this ginormous pile of mail and based on some of the dates on here, it's looking at that these packages arrive to me by mid to late April at the latest first week of May. So I've been holding on to this stuff for a little over a month and a half now and I'm finally figured out what I'm going to do for this video. So initially, I was going to unbox all these on camera. As you notice, there's no there's no top-down view at the moment. Uh, but I was struggling with getting everything to be blacked out, and it's just the thought of editing it all was very overwhelming. So I had shelved it for a little bit. I actually meant to have this Yugi Chat video this past Sunday. Absolutely ran out of time on Friday to record. So this is what you guys are getting here on this Tuesday at Ali's Treasure Trove. But what I figured I could go ahead and do instead is I'll just unbox and you know, take that idea of Yuki chat to the max. Go ahead and have a little bit of an alley chat. Talk to you guys while I unbox, edit, you know, not edit, but evaluate everything. I did order everything in near mint condition. Well, so we'll see what happens. Of course, a lot of these cards were very, very cheap. So if there's anything, it, it's way too late to even complain about it. I can't be that person that's like, I didn't open my package for two months but there's like a little white spot on the back and I have a partial refund on a seven cent card. So I'm just going to go ahead and open it all up. Hopefully everything's good. And I just need to make sure that like everything's here because I think I counted the right amount of packages, but sometimes the post office eats stuff. So of course, if there's anything I need to reorder, we'll go ahead and do that. But the goal here is to finish off my legendary collection Kaiba. So I have my list here. I'll go ahead and check everything off as we go through. There's some cards that I already scratched off. You may have seen because I actually was inspired to do this because we had a Yu-Gi-Oh collection in the shop that I was going through and I found some cards that I needed. And I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and snag these. They're all first edition because there was an unlimited release for the legendary collection Kaiba. So I made sure I went ahead and grabbed all first ed editions and I'll go ahead, crack out my old pack of Kaiba sleeves and my very lovely Kaiba with blue eyes binder here and go through and fill in all of my empty spots. And I'll go ahead and bring that camera view up as I put everything away. And of course, I was not the most, I guess, mindful person when I set up my binder. I didn't realize that there's actually two different versions of Crush Card. So I think I ordered the right one, but I couldn't really tell by the picture. So I will literally have to adjust my entire binder uh, from about this middle part by one over. So lots of fidgeting with the binder, but that, you know, be cool taking a look. Like that Wise video, just go through all my cards. Just have a good time opening up Kaiba related stuff. So the cards I got from the shop, I did end up, let me make sure I'm recording. That'd be horrendous if I wasn't. Did have this blue eyes, white dragon. This is the regular art, of course, traditional art. Now this one is the only one that was a bit iffy. There's a little bit, I mean, yeah, not necessarily a bit there. I would, if I were to list this on TCG player, I put it as light play. The back is very clean. There's a very slight dent on the front that doesn't show through at all, but it sticks out to me. So I'd automatically put that at light play, but otherwise very, very clean card. So that's the only one that was a bit iffy. I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll just take it. Also had Dragon Master Knight here, Return of the Dragon Lords, Dark Arm Dragon, and Thunder Dragon. So I believe actually the most of the cards that I was missing were secret rares. And the one card I know that I was missing was Ash Blossom, because when this product came out, Ash Blossom was $82. So what I did is I asked, yo, boss man, can we get any of this stuff in? I heard there's this new Kaiba set coming out. No, I already missed the boat on pre-order. Because at that point, I wasn't doing any of the ordering, not really looking for upcoming stuff. I just seen an announcement on like the Yu-Gi-Oh! website. I was like, wow, there's Kaiba cards coming. I love Kaiba. Obviously, I want to buy it. By then, uh, just because of like Ash Blossom and other really good cards in the set, it was already sold out. So what I had to do is I had to just drive around Pinellas County, hunting Walmarts, buying out Kaiba collections. So what I did is I opened them up, sold the Ash Blossoms, and then just used that money to just keep buying more Kaiba collections. So I had a lot of the set already in my possession. There's just lots of holes. Most expensive cards that I didn't have being the Ash Blossom that of course I was selling. I think I managed to snag it at around like 15, 17 or so dollars. So I, you know, still decently priced, but definitely a lot, lot cheaper than it was initially. So definitely still a value move on my part. And also Card of Demise was the other expensive card. Everything else, the reason there's so many packages is because it's not like people have a ton of legendary collection Kaiba near mint first ed inventory. So I had to get from a bunch of different sellers. Um, I think ending to finish off everything, all the different shipping included, this whole pile was about $110. And there also is a Weiss card in here. I'll finally be adding to my collection, the Naked Flying Tree Man. So it's in here. It's whatever ideal 808 package because I ordered from them. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to get started opening these all on up. Like I said, I'm not showing off 
the actual top-down view like I initially wanted to just because some envelopes weren't taking the Sharpie very well, and I was just like, some of these have packing slips in the windows, and that's like extra effort, and I don't want to like open it up, block it out, and like, you know, pretend to react to something. So I was like, whatever, just take it, alley chat, Yugi chat to the max, and I'll just, I'll just be long-winded here while you guys look at my face. How are you guys doing tonight? I am, of course, recording as I normally do for the Trove on Monday at 11.46 p.m. That is obviously an optimal time to record. So cool, some of these don't even have packing slips. This is taped to a kind of gross top loader, but it actually came in a Yu-Gi-Oh size sleeve. This is my Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. That's card number eight. Let me grab my, all right, so I have a pen here. And, oh cool, it, the tape, the gross tape that's on here wasn't actually on here, it's just tape residue. Let's go ahead and check out Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. Let's evaluate you from Badger TCG. All right, so we need a new Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. Interesting. Uh, that I would put at mod play. <laughs> so we'll actually take a look at we'll take a look at this stuff that I evaluate as a no bueno afterwards. So let me take my list off and uh, let me make a note here. Blue Eyes Shining, or eight MP. You're not getting feedback, my dude. I have to go back and check how much this stuff was. Like I said, this is the risk of waiting a month and a half to open your package. If stuff isn't great, you can't really do anything about it. So that's a bit disappointing here. Package number one. Wah, wah, wah. You know, if I had uh, sound effects, I could put it in. But otherwise, you just got to do it yourself. All right, next package here from Top Choice Cards. This one was handwritten. Also, one person, you know, my, my full name is actually Alexandra. One person, one person messed up and put Alexander. There is one package to Alexander, insert last name. I mean, Allie's last name not is, isn't is from Titan? Why isn't Allie's last name actually just from Titan? This makes no sense. All right, here from, this was, what did it say? Top choice cards. We have a Fiend Sanctuary. This one was taped. All right, not a fan of tape, but. Evaluate this one. All right. That one's a light play. All right, it's card number 30. This is not fun. Perhaps I'm too harsh on our TCG listings, but there's no way I would consider either of these cards, especially that blue eye Shining Dragon, anywhere close to near mint. So, all right. <laughs> We're zero for two. <laughs> ah! Like, look, that, that blue eyes white dragon with the dent is like near mint, like PSA 10 compared to these cards. All right, from JR Cards in Utah, we have a The King of D. Double sleeved, interesting. Interesting. Appreciate the effort. Ah. Now that, that passes at near mint. Thank you. Big shout out to JR Cards here on that King of D. And the top loader looks clean. I'm gonna snag that for reusing. It does feel like a standard non-premium. So of course, you know my whiny butt is like, yeah, I don't like standard top loaders, but okay, card number 107 makes it into the binder. I should have actually sleeved up the cards from our shop as well, but I can go ahead and do those now. First Ed. There's two, I gotta check if they're first Ed as well. That would be very unfortunate for them not to be. I also felt really bad. The time I ordered it, a lot of these envelopes got stamped like the week of the 14th the, through the post office. So they all have the Celebrate Earth Day. And it's like, thanks. Um, I'm sorry I'm destroying the planet with my packages with my like 7 to 70 cent cards for the most part. My apologies, planet Earth. This is awkward, so I keep looking at all these Earth Day stamps. I'm like, Ooh. All right, this one doesn't actually have the shop name, so I won't say who it's from. All right, next one. 
Interesting to see a lot of these orders packed up without packing slips. Of course, I say that here in our next package does have a very, I think, tiny folded up packing slip. Right, this is why. No, it's actually it's actually just a blank sheet of paper. You're getting recycled. Interesting. But inside we have card of demise. All right. So it is first ed. Passes number one inspection. The top loader is a little dusty. I'll put it for recycling. It is a double sleeve card of demise. All right. The inner sleeve looks good as well. All right, so this is one of our more important purchases. That is the crispiest card of them all so far. Nice. Very, very true pack fresh near mint card of demise. Nice. From seller's actual name was Brandon. So thank you, Brandon. Appreciate it. Don't know which store I ordered it from, but Brandon did me a solid here. All right, it's card number 29. You can get scratched off. Let me make sure I actually had scratched off. Yep, 67, scratched off that list. 68, Dark Arm Dragon, get scratched off the list. 74, was already pre-scratched, all right. 65, was pre-scratched. Number one, that's the other number one, I believe. And 107 is scratched. All right, so let me actually try and keep these in a putting in order just so that it's easier on me. I'm not going to scratch off the number one because I believe there is uh, perhaps one variant, one cheaper Blue Eyes variant that I still needed. Uh, so we'll see as we get there. If not, we'll scratch off that number one. The fact that Dark Arm Dragon wasn't already scratched makes me think I might have gotten the second one, but that's okay. Next up from Cindy's Collectibles. What is in the package here from Cindy's Collectibles? Now, I'm very happy. Things are looking up. Things are looking up. Very, very nice and crispy. Card of Demise. I wonder how the Blue Eyes Shining and the Fiend Sanctuary even got to, like, mod play, light play. It's like, who even... Speaking of, there's that other Blue Eyes, the one with the, the, the orb in the background. All right, first Ed passes our first test. Top loader is taped, so top loader auto-recycled. Cindy's collectibles, I'd put this in the light play category, so makes me wonder. Makes me wonder about and all these places did have good feedback, so let me put one LP. We'll see. I'll actually evaluate whether it's worth my time or not to go back and figure them out if I want to repurchase these. <laughs> throw them in the throw them in the Titan Cards 25k throw a uh, giveaway. This is the one. I can't even read the handwriting, but it's from New York, and it says to Alexander. So this is the package I was auto auto enraged at. It's like okay, it's not it's not Ali, it's not a big deal. It's like yes, but I've also had I've also told people my name and still had them call me Alexander to my face, and it's like, bruh. So auto alley trigger here. And this is a polymerization first ed, but it. All right, so the top loader is, is taped. Again, not a fan of that at all. But it's in a sleeve. At least it's in a sleeve. That is our new standard. Polymerization to Alexander is... Light play. All right. All right, card number 26. We are not winning here. We are not winning. Alexander's package goes in the light play pile. Card Haven is this next envelope. Ah! See, my initial goal for the Kaiba Collection stuff was on release. I wanted to find it in person, but no other places in the area carry Yu-Gi-Oh. We, at that point, didn't even carry Yu-Gi-Oh. We had stopped carrying it because just we just it wasn't doing well, and the crowd for Yu-Gi-Oh was not very good, to say the least. So we had stopped carrying it. Nowhere else had it. Nowhere else had any Kaiba Collection singles, so weren't really able to do that. This is a giant red sea snake sandwiched between a bunch of future card buddy fight dead dead game cards. 
So this is the giant red sea snake and parrot dragon. The sea snake passes, the parrot dragon does not. All right, so card number 96 goes in the light pay pile. All right, so 97, get to cross that one on off. Yep, that looks good. All right. Not perfect, but definitely still passes for near mint. Number 97. So let me... I was kind of doing this as a meme. I, I didn't actually expect anything to uh, not pass. Perhaps that was short-sighted of me, but I didn't expect I didn't expect stuff to not pass. All right, from Rem Gaming, our next package. Been doing this for fifteen minutes. What? Definitely gonna be a long video. Hey, cards of consonant secret looks nice in the top loader. It is upside down, so that way when I put the knife in to cut the tape, it, there's absolutely no chance that anything gets damaged. So that's cool. Appreciate, appreciate it. So cards of consonants first ed here from Rem Gaming is minty fresh. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you, Rem Gaming. That's card number ninety-two, secret rare. Cross that off my list. All right. Next package here. Hey, there's the ideal 808 up after this one, but from JP's Curtain Call. Tiny knife would get in the envelope. That'd be great. Tiny knife, please. Do, 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 do. Tiny knife. That looks like maybe a micro packing slip. There it is, tiny little packing slip. Hey, it is Dark Arm Dragon. <laughs> nice. That's cool. I have a I have a new Dark Arm Dragon. Ha ha. And it comes in those new fresh Dark Magician Girl the Dragonite sleeves. So this one is oh. It's mint on the front. Mod play on the back. Good thing I had one. All right. This is oddly depressing. This is an oddly depressing opening. Ideal 808 up next. Please don't fail me. If this is not a near mint naked flying tree man, I will be crushed. Crushed. Crushed it. Crushed, you say? Yes. I will be crushed. Crush carded. All right. This does have a packing slip inside. I knew either way it's weird. They have their stuff listed on their personal website, and then they also stuff lists on TCG. But their inventories are like cross, like cross. They have everything listed on both. But I wonder how much they accidentally oversell. All right, I do have my, <laughs> there is Naked Flying Tree Man. A huge accident. This is a great card here, you guys. That feels like a regular top loader. However, it's a clean top loader. The sleeve's clean too, so cool. Stick those back. Still switched out for a new one of ours, but that is nice. Huge accent, triple R. Look at that, minty fresh. Easy, it shouldn't be hard to grade something as near mint. If you see anything on it, it's not near mint. Hashtag Alley Rage. Thank you, Ideal 808. Go ahead and keep that in the top loader. What? That top loader? Oh, it's probably one that I kept that didn't feel... That one, that is a 100% not premium top loader. All right, there we go. That's nice. There's the feel I'm used to. That's cool. Got my package. And all right, this next one here is from Super Games. Now, I've actually been to Super Games in Atlanta... When I first got into Yu-Gi-Oh, and I was like, well, there's so many pros at Super Games. On one of our vacations up to Atlanta, I convinced my mom to take me to Super Games, and then I felt really awkward, so I just kind of walked around a little bit, and I looked at the gate, so then I left, because I was like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm, I feel awkward. 
I don't talk a lot. I don't talk a lot now. I talk a lot on camera because it's like I'm talking to myself, but like in general, like to people. But I used to be very, very silent, even more so than I am currently. All right, Super Games apparently does not even know how to use a top loader. What in tarnation, Super Games? This is a pile. This is a pile here. Did have a cardboard thing, which seems. If there was any pressure put on that envelope, that would have been bent. But, I mean, it all showed up fine. Woo! Woo! All right. The more I go, the worse it gets. But speaking of white, first Ed, near mint. That passes. All right. 35. It's fine. Draconic Tactics. Has some whitening at the border, but that all that honestly looks like it's just from the pack. So card number 73. Pass. The rest of this is where it gets a little bit iffy. The rest looks iffy. I would say the rest of our package here does not pass. The unfortunate 100, 110, and card number 99. I'll go in the light play pile. Okay. <laughs> Allie is sad do 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 Allie is sad do 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 card people stink. Shouldn't be this hard. It's not. It's not hard. It's not. Okay. All right, high voltage gaming up next. And I will actually, once we switch, once we switch views, once there's no more envelopes on screen, I will show you the cards that do not pass. And I'll let you guys join me in understanding why they don't pass. All right, so from High Voltage Gaming, we do have ABC Dragon Buster. All right, see first, Ed, so that's step here. Nothing has been a sneaky unlimited. There have been no sneaks, but definitely something you need to check. ABC Dragon Buster has a weird thing on it, but that looks, uh, ABC Dragon Buster does not pass. 59. LP. All right. Galaxy Buster TCG. Terraforming, secret rare, all right. First ed, I see it, I see it. No one has used a team bag in all of these packages. Nobody has used a team bag. However, this terraforming, it does not pass. This is next envelope, alternate universes. I have a big old pack and slip in here. Thank you for your order. They have a team bag. They don't have a top loader in here. There's a team bag with I have a coupon. That's cool. All right. Ooh, look at that nice trade in. Not using that coupon. All right. Next up, package from CL Gaming. 
You know what I need to do? I need to hit up Anthony. Be like, yo, Anthony, would you like to trade some Kaiba Collection First Dead Near Mint singles for Digimon? I don't even know if Anthony has. I feel like I would have asked already, but... We have a Delinquent Duo. So this is actually another not cheap card. Delinquent Duo passes with flying colors. Thank you, CL Gaming. I would certainly hope so. This thing was $22. All right, that would have been very upsetting if Delinquent Duo did not pass. I forgot Duo was so expensive. Did people play it in GOAT, I think. So max rarity Delinquent Duo makes sense for not being like initial. So Delinquent Duo passed with flying colors. That is actually a very big relief because that I would not... Two and a half months later, I cannot... I Look, this is the onus is on me here. That doesn't stop me from being butthurt. That doesn't stop me from being butthurt that more of what I purchased at first ed near mint, I mean, all of it's been near mint. More of it has been light play than near mint. How many cards have actually passed? One, two. Three, four, five, six cards have passed. This is more than six. I'm not going to eyeball it, but that's more than six. All right, next from the card ward. I believe, I actually think the Ash Blossom was more. I think last time I looked, the Ash Blossom was 15. I think actually it was like 25 bucks because they sent it in an envelope. Which implies to me that it's over $25. We also have the same policy. If it's over $25, we put it in a Bulma mailer uh, with tracking. Because we've had so many people try to scam us out of stuff. Uh, Alright, it's so Mausoleum of White here. This is a dollar ten. Did I waste a dollar ten? Alright, it's first ed. Passed the first test. Everything has passed our first test. Mausoleum of White passes our second test as well. Borderline, but Mausoleum of White passes. It's going in a sleeve. It's going in a sleeve. Go on. Hmm. Mausoleum of White is card number 36. A little bit iffy there on the border. A little iffy. Card ward. But I appreciate the attempt at due diligence. All right, next epic cards and games. I keep forgetting to clean up all these used top loaders and whatnot. All right, from Epic Cards and Games, we have Destruction Dragon, one dollar and sixty-four cents. All right, it's first ed. Destruction Dragon. Destruction Dragon looks like it can be cleaned. Let me grab a tissue. Fun fact, you can clean your cards lightly. If they're a little gross, it played a bit, but there's no like dents, there's no weird spots or like no actual damage to the card itself. Just a little, a little, a little grimy, maybe some like, you know, Sleeve grime, things like that. Makes me wonder if I can clean the trade-in as well. I might go back to that trade-in. Trade-in had something on it. Now let me see if I can clean up this destruction dragon. But on a tissue, light water, light pressure. Just like you're wiping off the surface, because that's all you're doing. You know, obviously you don't pour water on the card. The cards are not, you know... You can't water your cards. All right. So with a tiny bit of handiwork, Destruction Dragon does pass. All right, so 108. Like I said, I actually want to look at that trade-in. So there was a little spooge on the trade-in. 
I think there was something on the back that got me more upset. Oh, I'll eyeball that traded again, because the traded, I think, is not one of the lower end cards. This water, I've, sac I've sacrificed this water. The water has been sacked now that I'm touching the grime cards. All right. Let's see if Ali was being too moody. Judge that trade in too early. Obviously, the sellers should have taken care of this prior to listing. I shouldn't be having to do this at all. I am noticing actually this trade in, though. The trade in is a foil bleed trade in. So that's cool. The secret rare foiling carries on outside of the window. You can see it very faintly on the rest of the card. So actually, I did clean up the front of the trade in. The back looks a little. There, it was it was grimed up. Like I said, I can't drink this water anymore. The water is dead. Thank you, water. I had you because I knew I was going to talk a lot. I was going to get thirsty, so I might. I might. Honestly, this has been half an hour of me actually straight up just whining about spending a lot of money and having. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, cheaper than, like, one Marvel Black Diamond Loki Exquisite out of 23. Grand scheme of things, not humongous, but the fact that there's so many cards explains why we get, they undergraded this card, their seller's amazing reviews all the time on TCG Player. Because if this is what's considered near mint, everything in our inventory is basically near mint. All right, now that I... Mm. All right, now that I've taken care of it, all right, we're repassing the trade in. I'm going to leave it out, though. I want to go back over it, perhaps with a fresh tissue. All right, I won't, I won't mark it yet, but all right. That's actually what we're going to do. Instead of putting everything in the binder, because there's not much to put in the binder, once we snap ourselves into the corner and I show you guys all the cards, the mod play ones cannot be fixed. Mod play ones are dead. But once I take care of finishing up opening all this stuff. All right, so this was $1.96 from Nerds Kingdom, Dragon Revival Rhapsody. Right, near mint. Good start, good start. That's a pass. Thank you, Nerds Kingdom. We have a near mint card number 109. Thank you, thank you. Ah, and I know I have a multi-order here. Pittsburgh Yu-Gi-Oh. I know I was able to combine stuff with them. And get it all in one package for the convenience. Spent a little bit extra. It ended up being cheaper because TCG has the minimum 78 cent shipping on any order under $5. So even though other places had it cheaper, you're only paying shipping once, so it, it ended up being cheaper. But Pittsburgh Yu-Gi-Oh! has multiple cards. We'll see if we get super gamed, or if we hit triple sevens. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see, Pittsburgh Yu-Gi-Oh! Are we gonna are we gonna get the penguins or are we gonna get the flyers? What's here? What's in here? All right, so we have four cards in here. We have anti regeki Shrink, Vorse Raider, and White Hole. Uh, two of the cards are 30 cents. Two of them are 40 cents. All right, I'm seeing first eds. All right, we're off to a good start. I don't like how they're all shoved into a 55-point top order, but hey, I mean, woo, we have supply issues too. Can't, can't knock them for that. That White Hole is pass. Vorse Raider. Pass. anti ragecki Pass. Unfortunately, though, the Shrink... Hmm. Shrink has a little bit of a corner ding. But, how does it look in a sleeve? How does Shrink look in a sleeve? I could see it in the sleeve. Shrink, I put... Shrink. 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 Uh, yeah. Shrink, I don't pass. But Raigeki, 
and well, anti Raigeki number 104, Vorus Raider number three, and White Hole number 102. Pass. All right, 75 percent. I wouldn't academically that speaking, that's not a pass, but on the curve. This is a curved course. This is a curved course right now. All right, so 104, 104, card number three, easy. Number 102. However, our important stuff, our important stuff is the card of demise. I mean, last we'll see is that Ash Blossom, but card of demise was fine. Duo was fine. The rest of the stuff, like I said. That's... But there should be like max max one of these envelopes. That was a fail. All right, last one here. Yu-Gi-Oh! MTG California. Y-G-O MTG CA. We'll see. This is a, aha, uh -huh, this is the crush card. Are you the right crush card? That's a different question. Did I even order the right crush card? Why would you pack it like this? What? what? These things are valuable, one. Why are you... You're a little too California sober packing this order. But all right, crush card. Crush card. Passes with the light pass over of the, of the damp, the damp. Uh, I can tell ahead of time. It just needs to get a little, a little once over with this thing. All right, crush card passes. Is it even the the question remains though? Is it the right crush card? It is. Oh, cool. The pictures are very similar. The only difference is the one that I already had was slightly more purple. That was it. That was the only difference on the two versions of crush card. And unfortunately, the computer scans of both these cards on TCG Player look almost exactly the same. So I was like, I guess mine's the darker one. That's cool. So 46 crush card variant number one, apparently. I guess I had crush card number two. Passes. In spite of how it tried to get damaged in transit via that horrendous packaging. Because it slid out and got into the crease there of the bent penny or, um, card saver that you use to submit for grading that are expensive. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. All right. We have our last package here. We have our original prints, I think, of Ash Blossom. I think this is the first time it was printed. All right, from cute kitty cards, something like that. All right, there's a top loader in here. All right, it's a mark in the positive column. It's taped at the top. It's first ed though, first ed. Oops, cycle. Top loader's kind of gross, but you know, whatever, it is what it is. It's upside down, so that way when I stick in tiny knife, the card does not get clipped whatsoever. All right, sleeve is in good condition. Outer sleeve is in good condition. Obviously, that doesn't matter. Oh, look at that. That is a mint. Mint. Ash Blossom. All right. All right. Ash Blossom passes. All three of the actual cards that matter. If we're going to be harsh about it. All three of the cards that matter pass.
13 cards did not pass. One of which being, I'm a dummy and I bought one twice, so the Dark Arm Dragon uh, not making it out isn't really, doesn't really affect much. But all right, I'm going to grab tissue box. We are going to have some quote unquote fun. So let's just jump down here. Hello, I have a fancy moving border. Hello, hello. All right, we are 40 minutes in. Okay, okay. So here was my list. Go ahead and uh, set that off to the side. Here's our fancy naked flying tree man. Can go up there for emotional support. Here is our pass pile. Here is my binder. Sleeves. More recycling into the graveyard. All right, there is the list of what we have. Of course, what we were expecting was all near mint. So, starting off with this Dark Arm Dragon. Like I said, I was like, all right, Dark Arm Dragon on the front. Not bad, not bad. Clean. A little speck right there. Whatever. You can wash that. What you can't wash, however, are all these scratches. The scratches across the back. Now, of course, it's not the easiest to see on camera, but the fact that you all can see, not one, not two, not three, but those, and there's a dent right here. The fact that you can even see them on camera. Mod play. Not happy. Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. The way we started off. Look how grungy that is. And of course, the whiting on the corner. On three out of the four corners. The actual card itself is not clean. And then you get to the back. And then it has weird... Yu-Gi-Oh! does this with age for some reason. Even the card can be nice in the front, it automatically gets a light player lower with these weird marks. I think, I don't know if it's the way you store Yu-Gi-Oh cards or what, but it's not. And then this corner actually, you turn it over. These corners are actually soft corners. They're actually soft corners. Mod play. And alright, our trade-in had gunk right in the middle. Still has a little gunk right here by that coin. But like I said, it's actually a foil bleed trade-in. If you catch it in person, I don't know if it will show up. You can see ever so faintly through the white text box that the secret foiling bled out of the border. Now we need to clean right there. There's a spot. And the back's fine. Back is fine. Back looks like a regular Yu-Gi-Oh card. All right, so... We're going to see if we can clean you up, Mr. Trayden. Got off a good chunk. Like I said, the fact that you can do this to help your cards is a neat trick, but I shouldn't have to do this on something purchased near mint. So I think I can prime the Trayden into an acceptable condition. Still a little bit there by the coin. It doesn't capture. At this angle, you can see right above the shadow of my finger. So this I can give now. I can give, in my conscience, I can give this trade in a pass. However, I will know every time I look at this card that I'm like not 100% pleased with it. But in the sleeve and with time, the wounds of my heart will heal. All right, trade in. I'm going to cross off this list. So card number 76 was light play. We're ignoring that. The shrink, unfortunately, the shrink does have that corner. You guys can see. It's not that the corner was dinged per se. It, it looked like it got caught. You drop it at a weird angle and it falls on a, falls against the table. There's also this up here. A little bit of denting scratches up there. So the shrink does not pass. That's I can't fix that. Terraforming. Terraforming looks pretty gunky. 
But terraforming also has... That's a scratch. That's an actual scratch on the card right here. That's a scratch. I can try on the terraforming. I don't think it'll help to my level, but just, you know. Like I said, I think what I'll do is I'll tie this to the Titan Cards 25k special. Do a little giveaway, a little Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! pack. That way it doesn't feel like a waste. Because otherwise, I don't know what to do with these cards. I may as well give them to someone who will appreciate them more than I. So yeah, there's a scratch on the front too, actually, right? Right here. I feel like you guys are like, Allie, you're crazy. I can't see anything, but I see it. All right, this one, the Dragon Buster, what it was is there's gunk here. Gunk. Big gunk. How do you not see that when you're packing up the order? No idea. All right, gunk was removed. There is gunk here. All right. And a little bit of a border cleanse. So in the thumbnail, I'm tempted because I, I have completed my collection. Yeah, title in the thumbnail. I'm wondering if I should go back and change that to a question mark or if that's too ominous. All right, you want the dry side to wipe off excess. You want the damp side. All right, front is clean on the Dragon Buster. Dragon Buster has been cleaned to an acceptable level. All right. NBC Dragon Buster, number 59. There's supposed to be the trade for the, the, sleeve, the sleeve for the trade in, but that's okay. So, what I'm learning here is I might be harsh on my grading. But I don't feel like my standards are unreasonable. Exile the Wicked. Okay, so we're getting into Exile the Wicked, Loop of Destruction, and I believe Warrior Elimination. These three here are from Super Games, if I remember correctly. At least Loop of Destruction and Exile the Wicked. I think we passed two, failed three. Let's, let's leave these up. Gotta get all of Patrick Hoban's gunk off my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. No, I don't follow what he's up to. Our, our, our Jin Lord and Savior, Patrick Hoban. But did used to work at Super Games. To my understanding. I can tell with my work here, I'm not going to be pleased with that. So we are dropping our Kleenex box and moving on into that loop of destruction. All right. Hello. Come here, loop. Where are the issues on the loop? Mainly image. And then on that side, the back of the loop could use a run through with the cleaner as well. Again, we're just using slight water and some handwork. Don't actually push, just you can always go in. Don't put too much water. You can always do it again. All right, the loop is improving, whereas the Exile of the Wicked was not improving.
grab some more water. Loop is improving, but that is actually just straight up just light play. All right. This one was the lightest light play of them all. Not lightest light play as in like actual true light play condition, but as in like the least amount of issue, but still not passable. I would say the warrior passes from the front now. And the back, I'll just give it a quick, quick clean. All right, warrior now passes. Warrior of elimination. If I were to look at that, there's a little spooge up there in the corner. I'd look at that and I'd be like, "Aight, that that that's fine." If we opened this up, I would have been pleased with that. I'd see a little bit and I'd be like, eh, my brain does not care. So card number 99 has been fixed. All right, Parrot Dragon. Scratches. See the little spaghetti pile of scratches. That is not, I'm not even gonna bother. Polymerization. Gunk and a corner. And of course, right there. There's the, the orb art blue eyes. Have right up there, the nick on the card. Gunk on the front. Because of the nick, I'm not even going to try. And Fiend Sanctuary. This one is gunked. And there is a giant. Scratch. Alright. So we, we, we brought three up to par. Well, there's only ten reject cards out of... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Hold on, I'm count. I'm only counting the scratch ones. So ten reject cards out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eighteen pats, ten did not pass. So that's better than we started out with where we had 15 pass, 13 not pass. That is still incredibly too high of a number. So like I said, I'm not even going to bother putting these away. This part of me, in my heart, is still wondering if I should grab a different trade-in. I don't see it through the sleeves, but in the back of my mind, I, I'm gonna have to sleep on it, see if it bothers me. Del the Delinquent Duo is very nice. The Ash Blossom is great. And the Card of Demise, right? Card of Demise was, I think, Card of Demise and Ash Blossom, I think, were tied for the most pristine. And then the Delinquent Duo was absolutely near mint as well. So those, like I said, the ones that actually matter did come through well for us. I'm just upset that we have this situation in the first place. But I hope that was maybe slightly informative. If perhaps you have some cards and you're wondering, be like, I think this condition's not bad. How it's someone as nutty as Allie? Because you don't know what kind of customer you're going to get. You got to think, you got to have the person with the absolute highest expectations. And how that person, how you'd interact with them. Uh, hope this was informative. Now you know what to look for. As people will be like, it's near mint. And be like, yeah. Yeah, you know what? Technically, technically a PSA 7 is mint. PSA 7 is considered mint. It's not mint. All right. 
Or is it eight? Seven point five is n is near mint plus. PSA eight seven. Only look at a label for a PSA seven. Here's someone. Yep, near mint seven. This is a nineteen ninety nine Venusaur Shadowless for five hundred bucks. That seems. Oh, it's a video game, Pokemon game. I don't know. That seems kind of cheap. But a seven. PSA 7 is considered mint. PSA 7, by someone looking at it, you don't look at a card that gets graded a 7 and be like, yeah, that's mint. You just don't. You don't. If you do, maybe, like I said, maybe I'm a nutcase, but it's kind of my job. If anyone wants to disagree with me condi with condition... In the comments, you are free to do so. However, I won't back down on it. Now you guys can say, I don't like the way you do this, but I don't like the way you do that. I don't agree with you. And I'm like, all right, well, maybe, maybe. No, no. This one, I will. You can you can say whatever you want. It's like, fine, that's your, well, that's just your opinion, man. But in this case, that's, that's, no. This is no. So I won't be putting these away. I'll be sleeping on the, I'll be sleeping Sleep it on that trade in. I think it was number 76. And perhaps we'll have a part two. Perhaps we'll have a part two. Maybe I'll go back and get these again. See how it goes. See how it goes. But all right. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it wasn't necessarily as happy, as exciting as you may have wanted. It wasn't for me, but I hope it was good for you. I mean, it was still, I still think this was good content, good video, perhaps a bit informative. Seeing Alley Rage is always kind of fun. Being like, getting the highs, getting the lows. So, I think overall, still a good video. This is open. We'll look at it. We'll look a little bit. All oh, Blue Eyes deck. You got White Stone, Maiden, Master, Sage, Priestess. You guys have seen this stuff. Look, you guys, this is... This is Alley's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links deck right here. You guys can't even see the left page. Doesn't matter. That's a nice looking card. Silver's Cry. Enemy Controller's a good card. Mirror Force, obviously. I like it. I like it. You got is your eyes. This was actually pretty expensive. I remember when this was first printed in a premium gold set. And that was like the big chase. Now that card's dirt. Now Droll and Lockbird in here. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. You see the stuff and be like, man, this is where hot stuff back in the day. Raigeki. And when you start getting to the high numbers, it was just completely empty. I just, I don't know, I got most of the low set. I didn't get most of the high set. But that does it here for this video on Allie's Treasure Trove. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smack that like button. Comments for me, leave those down below. And let me know how you feel. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm crazy? Were you as disappointed? Do you think I am under upset? Being like, Allie, doesn't matter if the card's 30 cents. That's wrong. You think, Allie, you should message them, even though you'd be kind of an a-hole for a month and a half late. Be like, hey, I finally op I finally opened up the envelope in this 30 cent card. I wasn't happy with it. Like, I'm not, look, I'm not spending 55 cents on a card. Uh, I'm not mailing it back. But what would you do? Let me know if you were in my shoes, what you would do in the comment section down below. But before I get on out of here, because it is 12.40 a.m. Do have to give a big shout out to all my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much, you all, for going above and beyond with your support. Truly do appreciate it. If you are an Ultimate Excavator or a Gemstone Miner, uh, make sure you go ahead and check on Patreon for a message from me. Did go ahead and actually get everything shipped on out. Started shipping things on Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, and finishing up everything this morning. Uh, my time. Well, so yesterday morning. Monday morning. So you guys should have updated tracking numbers all scanned in, ready to go on your different perks. So make sure to go ahead, follow those. That way you don't miss a package. You know, porch pirates exist. You never know. Uh, so make sure to keep your eyes on that. Did get everything all sent out. But of course, thank you so much for your guys' support. We do have six Ultimate Excavators now, which I'm surprised. I never thought we'd get to like two, let alone six. So thank you so much to Dustin Archuleta, Jack Prez, Keith Muna, Mako, Mark Lennon, and Stephen Olivo. And of course, our two Gemstone Miners, Andin and Stephen Bly. But thank you so much to all of my patrons. As I mentioned, I appreciate the support from each and every one of you, even if you've ever had the thought to sign up for my Patreon. Really, really appreciate you thinking about me like that. And those of you who do go above and beyond with your support, thank you so much. That does it for me here tonight. I want to go ahead and go get some beauty sleep. On the Titan Cards channel, I'll be opening up Modern Horizons 2. So that's exciting. Uh, but, and now I'm a naked flying tree man.
Step close to the set. Still have this nice pile of sleeves. The binder's super cool. Yes, we lost some cards, but the duo, the card of demise, and that ash blossom, it's fine. Sometimes you gotta be positive. But that's it for this one. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I hope you'll join me next time as we unearth some more treasures here on Ally's Treasure Trove. We'll, of course, be back on Thursday. So I hope I'll catch you guys then. But take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.